Good evening. This is a special coverage of the coronavirus crisis using the combined forces of News 5 and Signal TV's One News, Radio Cinco and One PH. The number of recoveries from COVID-19 in the country has breached the 1,000 mark according to the, to the latest tally of the Department of Health. There are now 1,023 recoveries after the DOH recorded 48 new recovered patients in the past 24 hours. Meanwhile, the total number of COVID-19 cases has reached 8,212 with 254 new cases. 558 patients have succumbed from the illness after tallying 28 new deaths. Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere says that more than 1,500 healthcare workers have tested positive for COVID-19, in which 32 have died. So far, accredited laboratory centers nationwide have conducted about 89,000 individual COVID-19 tests. The DOH adds that laboratory centers can conduct 6,500 tests per day, still short from their 8,000 tests per day target by April 30. The Justice Department has released its relaxed guidelines on the application process for parole and executive clemency among inmates. Under the new guidelines, prisoners that are 65 years old and above who have served a period of no less than five years may apply for early release. But they also need to secure certification from either the DOH or the Malacanang Clinic Director that further imprisonment may badly impact their health. Applicants must also have no pending case or appeal and must have a clean NBI record. PDLs that are charged for heinous crimes or illegal drugs are excluded from applying for early release. The same goes for those branded as high risk by the Bureau of Corrections. The DOJ says the new guidelines will be implemented starting May 15, coinciding with the last day of the extended lockdown in various parts of the country. Residents of Barangay San Miguel in Pasig City trooped their Barangay Hall and stood in line for hours to gather cash aid under the social amelioration program. However, some of them still failed to get their financial assistance. Ria Fernandez reports live from Pasig to tell us more. Ria, bakit hindi pa rin nabigyan ng ayuda yung ilang residente ng Barangay San Miguel kahit halos buong araw ng araw silang pumila? Jess Quinuento sa atin ng kapitan ng barangay San Miguel na kaya raw sila nagtagal sa pamamahagi ng cash aid kahapon ay dahil may mga residente silang pumila pa rin kahit wala naman sa listahan ng mga beneficiaryo. Inako naman nila ang mga batikos pero giit nila dapat ding sisihin ang DSWD sa pangyayaring ito. Sa video na ito nakuha ng isang concerned citizen kahapon, makikita ang haba ng pila ng mga tao sa barangay San Miguel na umabot pa nga sa tulay ng kabilang kanto. Sa sobrang dami ng tao, kapansin-pansin ding hindi na sinusunod ang iba ang pinaiiral na social distancing. Ang mga ito ay sinasabing mga beneficiaryo ng Social Amelioration Program o SAP. Marami raw sa kanila sa kalsada na nagpalipas ng gabi pero ang distribusyon ng SAP inabot pa rin ng siyam-siyam. Ayon sa isa sa mga residenteng pumila kahapon, nauwi sila sa wala ang matagal nilang paghihintay. Huli na raw nang sabihan sila na hindi na sila kayang ma-accommodate sa 6 p.m. cut-off. Ang residente ngang si Honey De Leon, bumalik pa ngayong umaga matapos siyang abuta ng 6 p.m. cut-off kahapon. Mangyak-ngyak siya nang sa wakas, nasa kamay na niya ang 8,000 pisong cash aid. Nagsorry naman si Kapitan Roberto Benito dahil sa tagal ng pamamahagi ng cash aid sa mga SAP beneficiary. Pero giit ng kapitan, kailangan ding ayusin ng DSWD ang kanilang pamamahagi ng cash aid. Sinabi naman ni DSWD Secretary Rolando Bautista sa kanyang huling press briefing na bukas naman silang pakinggan ang anumang reklamong may kinalaman sa SAP. Jess, umabot na sa higit 8 milyong may hirap na pamilya ang napamahagian nitong hanggang 8,000 na cash aid. Ang target ng DSWD, hanggang 18 million poor families o yung nasa low income bracket. Sabi rin ni Secretary Bautista, nakikipagtulungan na sila sa DICT para gumawa ng isang app para mapabilis ang kanilang pag-transfer nitong SAP. Jess? Uh, okay, Ria, this stage, considering nga doon sa nangyari dyan sa Barangay San Miguel, are the officials also uh, studying other means kung paano nila at least ma-hand out itong uh, 
cash aid doon sa mga residente ng Barangay San Miguel? Mm -mm. Just idinulog natin tong problema ng Barangay San Miguel sa DSWD NCR. Ito yung nakakasakop talaga sa mga LGU na nasa Metro Manila. At ang sabi nga nila, bagamat naiintindihan nila yung uh, posibleng dahilan nitong uh, Barangay uh, San Miguel kung bakit kailangan nila magpatupad ng cut-off at hindi ma-accommodate ang lahat ng kanilang mga residente na gustong mag-claim ng kanilang cash aid, ay kakausapin pa rin daw nila itong mga partners nila sa LGU para mapabuti yung proseso at sistema ng distribusyon ng SAP. Jess? Alright, maraming salamat. That was Ria Fernandez. More stories coming after a quick break. This is our special coverage on the COVID-19 pandemic. Stay with us. Welcome back. You are still watching the special coverage of the coronavirus crisis using the combined forces of News 5 and Signal TV's One News, Radio Cinco and One PH. While local officials work round the clock to ensure that quarantine protocols are followed, a town mayor in Cavite prepares 10 whole roast pigs or lechon as a tasty incentive to motivate his constituents to stay at home. JC Cosigo joins us live from Cavite for the story. JC, so paano mangyayari sa pong lechon na balak ipapremyo ng Alfonso LGU? Yes, Jess, alam mo ang ginawa ng pag-contest ng Alfonso LGU. Itong pagsunod sa umiiral na enhanced community quarantine. Kasi nga, sampung lechong babo lang naman yung ibibigay doon sa barangay na wala o may lowest na bilang na ECQ violators mula nga April 27 hanggang May 15. Ay nga kay Mayor Randy, salamat. Importanteng magstay sa mga bahay ang mga residente sumunod sa ECQ guidelines. Halupat na kahawa at mabilis na kumalat ang sakit na COVID-19. Donasyon nga ng dalawang privado individual ang mga letson at imbis na saluhin ay naisipan na lamang nilang ipakontest ang mga ito. Magmumula nga sa mga nag-iikot na pwersa ng Alfonso LGU, PNP at Reserve Army ang datos para nga maging patas ang bilang ng mga violators sa mga barangay. Sa barangay sikat nga na isa sa pinakamataong barangay, at may isang kumpirmadong kaso ng COVID-19 na pinagahandaan na ang pag-contest ng lokal na pamahalaan. Three times daw sa isang araw umiikot ang tatlong patrol para nga masigurong walang lalabas ng mga bahay. Isa lang rin na kanilang entrance at exit point kaya hindi makakalusot ang mga walang quarantine pass. Tatapot dalawang barangay nga ang maglalaban-laban para nga sa sampung lechon na papremyo at hahatiin at ibibigay bahay-bahay para wala pa rin mass gathering. Tuloy-tuloy pa pa rin Jesse paghahanda nga ng Alfonso LGU para nga sa mas strict implementation ng quarantine sa buong probinsya ng Cavite sa papagsapit ng May 1. Kabilang nga dyan itong pamimigay nga ng ayud ng pinansyal at grocery nga sa mga residente. Narito nga ang pahayag ni Mayor Salamat. Nung isang araw lang po, binigay ko na po yung pang isang buwan nilang ayuda sa bawat bahay. So, para po siguraduhin na kung dumating po yung uh, May 1 hanggang katapusan po ng May, eh sigurado po na hindi po sila magugutom. Then ngayong araw at bukas, yung mga bahay na hindi po nakatanggap ng SAP, bibigyan po namin ng 500 pesos tsaka groceries, pandagdag ding ulam para siguraduhin po talaga na hindi na po sila lalabas. Jess, alam mo, we went there din doon sa bayan nga ng Naika Vite kung saan patuloy nga itong kanilang repacking ng mga relief goods at doong bigas na ibibigay nga doon sa kanilang mga constituents. And now, they are on their fourth wave of donations. Sa so ngayon nga, sa pinakulang talangan ng mga LGU ay meron ng limang kaso nga ng COVID-19 din sa Naika at tatlong kaso naman na dito sa Alfonso. Jess? Okay, posibleng mababa nga yung kaso ng COVID pero baka tum uh, tumaas naman yung kaso ng high blood kung sino man barangay yung mananalo. Isang tanong, JC, hindi ba parang lugi yung malalaking barangay kumpara dun sa maliliit? Kasi the more na marami yung families, mas lilit yung portion mo ng lechon. Eh paano daw kung may magtay? Yes, Jess, we actually asked that question earlier kay Mayor Salamat. Ang sinasabi niya, in the event daw na magkulang pa yung mga letson, handa sila magdagdag pa ng mga additional na letson. Ang mahalaga nga daw ay makatikim lahat at magkaroon kahit pa paano ng mga one-fourth na kilo ng letson sa mga bahay-bahay. Jess? Maraming salamat. That was News 5's JC Cosigo reporting to us live from Cavite. The usual cheers and happy tears were absent today in Padre Fara upon the announcement of the country's newest lawyers. 
bar passers, including the 2019 top notchers, who are mostly women, have no choice but to celebrate the momentous news online and at home. Marlene Alcaide has a story. Endless cries and shouts of joy used to fill the grounds of the Supreme Court as it announced the passers of the previous bar exams. But today is a completely different story. An empty Supreme Court is all that's left. This time around, aspiring lawyers anxiously waited for the lease to be posted on the website while at home under lockdown. Roy Carpe de Vesa couldn't hide his joy upon learning that he passed the bar. He says the ongoing pandemic added to the anxiety as he awaited the results. Out of the 7,658 examinees, 2,103 passed the bar. That is equivalent to a passing rate of 27%. Seven of the top 10 bar placers are women. May Dayan Azores of the University of Santo Tomas Legaspi led the list with 91.49%. She's followed by Princess Fatima Parahiman of the University of the East. In third place is Mayra Baranda, also from UST Legaspi. Fourth, Donna Bandola of San Beda, Alabang. Fifth, Jocelyn Fabelio of Palawan State University. Kenneth Manuel's post on Twitter trended when he learned that he ranked sixth on the top list. Eighth placer Anton Luis Avila from St. Louis University couldn't hide his joy when he saw his name in the top 10 list. He said he has prepared himself for the worst. <laughs> Completing the top 10 are graduates from UST, Jose Rizal University, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, and University of St. Lasalle. Justices had to lower the passing grade from 75% to 74% amid the need for younger and more technologically adept lawyers. The discerned need for more younger and technologically adept lawyers to help different fronts of society as we meet the peculiar challenges brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic and transition to the new normal. In keeping with the safety protocols instituted by the national government in response to the current public health emergency, as he says, signing of the role of attorneys, clearance procedure, and oath-taking will be announced in due time. Meanwhile, due to the coronavirus pandemic, the SE announced that the 2020 bar examinations this year will be postponed to give the court ample time to determine the necessary adjustments. For News 5, Marlene Alcaide, we are One News. Congratulations to the country's newest lawyers. And that's the latest on the enhanced and expanded community quarantine. For more updates, follow News 5, the Philippine Star and Business World Online. I'm Jess De Los Santos. We are One News.